The metaphor of traveling and journeying is an apt one that captures the reality of our human experience. But we also find in the Quran references to actual journeying, traveling in the world and experiencing Allah's creation. Allah tells us to go forth in search of His bounty and thus have cause to be grateful. He instructs us to travel through the earth as a means of witnessing His glory and gaining experiential knowledge of Him through His creation. He speaks of giving us signs and indications of how to chart our path in the world physically. These are commands for us to travel the road of life, not just metaphorically, but physically to experience as a means of learning and growing and realization. In many of the classic stories of the great journey, both within the Islamic tradition and in other wisdom traditions, the traveler sets out from home to discover something bigger out there to find answers, only to find that in the end, what he sought was inside him all along. But had he stayed in one place and not set out seeking, he never would have found the treasure inside of himself. Traveling provides us with perspective, which at times can only be achieved through the departure from our everyday surroundings. It gets us out of our comfort zone and forces us to pay more attention to our surroundings, to read the signs, to be in the moment. Whereas staying in our familiar environment can make us fall prey to habitual behaviors and attachment to comforts, an attachment to the notion of who we think we are instead of the full reality of our soul that is submitted to Allah. Staying stuck in familiar life patterns can stagnate our potential growth. Allah says, have they not traveled throughout the land so their hearts may reason and their ears may listen? Indeed, it is not the eyes that are blind, but it is the hearts in the chests that grow blind. We have a human tendency to avoid discomfort and the unknown and thus shield ourselves from seeing what is. So while it may seem scary to venture out into the unknown world, Allah is calling us to do just that because it's a means of seeking out and experiencing the truth that is out there for us to discover and to uncover within ourselves. Though we are wayfarers passing through this world, while we're here, we're meant to fully live and participate in life because it's a means for coming to know Allah. So we should be engaged in walking the road of life and making the most of the opportunity we have here. The mundane aspects of our life, our jobs, relationships, hardships, are not separate from our deen. The religion of Islam provides a path for living in the reality of the world practically, not just theoretically. Theology is not just for theory, it is for practice. Allah has given us the tools we need to navigate and the equipment we need in our backpack on this journey. We have the map in both the Quran and the way of the Prophet wasallam. And we can develop an internal compass in our heart when we clear it from the things that block it from our attachment to the creation and self-delusion. We have fuel to keep our bodies healthy with halal and tayyib food. And we have the nourishment for our souls in the prayer and the practices of dhikr. But we need not tread this path alone. We also need companions on our journey. This is why brotherhood and sisterhood is so important in Islam. To keep each other on the straight path and to travel along the road together. We need both guides and companions on the road of life. Wise ones who have traveled the road before and can teach us how to navigate and companions who we can travel together side by side along the path to Allah. 
to weather the winds together. We will come up against rough waters again along our journey. We can learn from experience and work together to be prepared, building a solid vessel that will carry us forward to what lies ahead.